fair that I spent all this time with you. It's not fair that somebody else got this and I got that. And the father steps in immediately and says, everything I have is yours. And it was true, because he had given the younger brother his portion. And now everything the father had for that older son, everything that he had was his. And God had to remind him that you need a spirit of gratitude. We all need a spirit of gratitude. Of all the people in the world, we have everything beyond our imagination compared to everyone else. As Christians, we sometimes get that attitude. We stay in the church a long time, and we get to where we're not really looking at our own issues that God wants to get out of us so that we can become the face of God in the world. One of the problems, if you're going to stand up and preach something or teach something, is that God is going to use the period right before you're supposed to get up and preach and to make sure when you stand up and talk, you experientially know very recently what these shortcomings are about. I drove home from here last Sunday. I had been thinking about this sermon for a bit. Up at Rico Road, there's a little Baptist church right across the street. And I go riding by, and there's about 10 Harleys out front. And there are people standing there in all of their leather-clad Harleyness. To use. And I just look at them and I say, Well, what is this? Hell's Angel Sunday or something? And all of a sudden I hear, Hey, elder brother, how's it going down there? And all of a sudden I just see something in me that needs to be chiseled off, that needs to be worn smooth. And it's at that moment that I come back around as the prophet. And I come back to God and say, I know that's something that I need to get right with you. And I need to stop being that way. There's another instance right now with, with one of my children who I have a little bit of distance with that started last Sunday. And it's very, very difficult to, to do what the father did, which is try to hope that they'll find the answer on their own. And then come back. It's so hard, and I'm sure my parents would speak of it, to let a child go and find their own answer. I can see what that father felt. And the real gut punch to us in this story is that God wants us to be the father. God wants us to be that person in the world who reflects who God is. He wants us to be the elder brother for a bit so that we see repeatedly the things that we need to get rid of. In recovery, we call it peeling the onion. We take away that outside layer that's our drinking, our drugging, but ultimately we find those are symptoms of the deeper issues, our resentment, our bitterness, our jealousy, our envy, our lust, our hatred. All of those things have to be slowly peeled off so that we become the core of that onion and we can be the Father like Jesus is encouraging to be. He's sitting there talking to the sinners and the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the drunkards, the cheats, the liars. And he's trying to get that message to them of who God is to them. He's talking to the Pharisees and he's saying, you need to be the face of God. And these are the things where I have really grown tired of seeing you misuse what I've entrusted to you. And he's talking to the disciples who are there saying, I want to in all of this reveal a little bit more of the character of God because when I go away, this is who you are going to have to be. For Dad, we read such a pretty thing at the, in our reading today. And, uh, and it sums up so well the, what's, what Jesus is trying to accomplish here. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. 
Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, let me so pardon, just like the Father did. Where there is doubt, let me give faith. Where there is despair, help me give hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, help me give joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to move away from being the prodigal and the elder brother, to where the focus is on me and all of those, but be the one who can be the father to other and console them. To be understood as to do the one, be the one who is understanding. To be loved as to love, to put it in action. For it is in giving that we receive. That's the message here. It's in when we do for others, the blessing comes back to ourselves. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. There's several takeaways from the message today. One of them is to look again at the beautiful wisdom of Jesus and the wisdom revealed in Scripture and how he can say things on so many levels. And depending on when we go in and read that story, we may be any of the roles. We may be the prodigal who needs to come back. We may be the elder brother who needs to look at some of our attitudes and our character flaws that need to be taken care of. We may be the father. And God may be telling us someone that we need to go console, that we need to go forgive. And so no matter when we read it, we can be the prodigal. We can be the brother. We can be the father. We can move amongst those. Another takeaway is for gratitude, to know what God has done for us, to appreciate that he accepted us coming back, to appreciate that he comes to us and speaks to us tenderly at times about the things that we need to change. And a takeaway of scripture. I've been thinking, both of these sermons, I thought about the, the passage I was going to preach from several days. And, and over that time, more and more was revealed to me as I read it. And that's something that really hasn't happened to me in years. And I encourage you to spend time in looking at God's Word and to let it speak to you. And as all of us who have been Christians for years and years and years, we kind of take some of these things for granted. And it's so important that we regularly refresh ourselves and regularly hear God speaking to us. Why? So we can be the Father to the people in the world today who need to see the face of God. And that's what God calls us to do. Let's pray. God, like the prodigal, we come back to you time and time again. Even there, we can take for granted your opening arms and your forgiving spirit. Help us see what that path to you ultimately cost. And that was your son dying for us. Help us see, as we are now Christians, the faults in us that you want to help us work through. That you want to help us become people who can be like the Father to show that face to the world around us. The world needs that face. It needs someone who's consoling, someone who's forgiving, someone who loves. That's our prayer today. We thank you for the beautiful story that reveals that to us. In Jesus' name.